Welcome back, everybody, to Volatility Trading Strategies. So it's been nearly two years since the famous Volpocalypse event that rocked the volatility market. For those few of you who don't know what I'm talking about, on February 5th, 2018, the VIX index spiked 115% in a single day, by far the largest single day spike in its history going back to 1990. Now, if the VIX existed back to 1987, that Black Monday crash would have been even worse and it would have topped this list. But February 5th, 2018 was devastating and it will be remembered by volatility traders forever. Or so I thought. I would have thought that after that day happened, all those traders who were taken by surprise, who thought something like that could never happen, would have learned a valuable lesson. A painful lesson for some, and I'm sorry if you lost money, but that lesson can be carried forward and actually be a positive thing. A constant reminder that volatility markets are volatile, unpredictable, and no matter how badly we want to chase those big gains, we just can't. I saw something on Twitter today that was egregious, and in good conscience, I can't ignore it. I'm going to talk about it, so subscribe to the channel, give the video a like for me if you enjoy this type of content, and let me show you that tweet that's got me all riled up today. I'll show you the tweet in just a second here, and as you're reading it, I want you to notice your first impression, because I think there's a good lesson to be learned here about how we absorb information online. Because there's no shortage of people out there pretending that they're traders in order to influence people. And sometimes not for money, their currency is likes and retweets and follows, some type of perceived respect for sounding like an expert in something that maybe they're not. In 2019, it's a minefield out there, so just be careful who you follow online. But let me show you that tweet that caught my eye. So if you had 20,000 in 2011 and you shorted 20% of that in UVXY, 100 shares, then with re-upped money with your profits on every reverse split, today you'd have 87,000, which is 20% per year compounded return on investment. And then he says 20% allocation allows you to endure a five times spike. So what he's saying is if you take 20% of your capital and you short UVXY shares, every time it does a reverse split, and there's been nine of them, so basically once per year, every time there's a reverse split, you rebalance back to the original 20% allocation. And he's saying that strategy would have made 20% per year. So what's your impression of that strategy? Feel free to pause the video and reread it a few times, but what do you think about that strategy? You can see that 38 people liked that tweet, so it was a pretty popular idea when he threw it out there. But what's wrong with that strategy? Hopefully you can see it clear as day, but let me show you a very basic example of what can happen when you short something as volatile as the UVXY. Let's say you start out being what you think is responsible. So let's say you've got 40% of your money in stocks, 40% in bonds, and only a small 20% allocation to shorting the UVXY. Remember, when you're shorting something, 100 shares like he said in the tweet, when that instrument goes up, you're actually losing money. So if UVXY is at $20 and you're short, if it goes to 30, you've lost half your money. If it doubles and goes to 40, well, you've lost all your money. So what happens to your overall portfolio when you catch one of those really bad streaks when the markets are going down and UVXY is spiking violently? Well, of course, you're losing money hand over fist, right? If the UVXY just doubled in price while you're short, you've lost the entire 20% allocation, right? Now your stocks would probably have gone down as well, but let's just assume that the other investments stayed the same. You'd still have taken a major hit in your overall portfolio, a 20% chunk gone. But now what happens if UVXY didn't stop at doubling in price? What if it kept going? In this case, again, we're gonna assume your stocks and bonds are still fine, but your short UVXY position has now cost you 60% of your overall portfolio. It's lost its own 20% allocation, plus 40% of your other capital because you shorted something that's spiking higher. If you were to liquidate everything at this point, you'd only have 40% of your assets left. Now, obviously at this point, allowing a small 20% allocation to cost you 60% of your overall portfolio, any rational investor with even an ounce of self-preservation is gonna dump the position at this point. Just pull the plug, call yourself an idiot and be thankful you didn't lose your entire portfolio. But what if you tried to hang on? What if you thought, oh, the market's always recover and UVXY will always start going back down again? What if you just hang on? Well, a product like UVXY can just keep going higher. And now you could easily find yourself in a position where a small 20% allocation to short UVXY just cost you your entire portfolio. Stocks, bonds, the whole thing, you're done. Net liquidation value, zero. Now, hopefully you see what I mean about the risk. 
If UVXY goes up two, three, maybe five times, you're going to be in a world of hurt. So the question is, what are the chances that something like that actually happens? Apple stock, for example, isn't in any danger of doubling in a month, and it's certainly not going to go up five times its value and cost you your entire portfolio. So what are the chances that UVXY does? Honestly, at this point, I think it would be prudent for all volatility traders out there to just assume that at some point in the future, UVXY is going to spike 300, 500, maybe 800% or more. That reckless tweet brings us back to before the Volpocalypse event in February 2018. Back then, there were so many traders out there saying volatility ETPs can't terminate, can't happen, don't worry, they never drop 80%. Well, if they existed in 1987, they would have been terminated that day. It would have already happened, so of course it can happen again, and it did. Isn't that a safe assumption for traders out there? Anything that has already happened can certainly happen again. Shouldn't we all carry that as a baseline assumption? What you're looking at here are simulated prices for the UVXY from January 2007 through June of 2009. Notice something? From September 2008 through October 2008, a very short period of time, just a few weeks, the UVXY would have spiked 1,427%. Forget about being insulated by a five times move. During the last financial crisis, that reckless strategy we're talking about could have blown up the entire portfolio a few times over again. Now, because of the risk in these products, because of Volpocalypse in Feb 2018, ProShares did reduce the leverage of UVXY from the original two times down to just 1.5 times, so we're safe, right? A 20% allocation to UVXY at only 1.5 times leverage should be fine, right? Not even close. This is showing simulated values using the 1.5 times leverage factor, and still, those few weeks would have seen a 737% spike. Easily enough to bankrupt the entire account and keep going and blow it up again if you decided to add more money. A trader following that strategy would have done all of that, lost their entire portfolio, trying to make 20% a year? Doesn't seem worth it, does it? And even if the risk of failure was small, it isn't by the way, I would actually consider it a near certainty, but even if it was just an outside chance, it's not nearly worth it to put up your entire portfolio on that bet. You've probably heard it said before, but it is apt here picking up pennies in front of the steamroller. That's exactly what that strategy is. Risking everything to make 20%. Honestly, what kind of rookie trader thinks that's a good bet? Maybe the kind that has no experience trading these products and doesn't know about past UVXY prices and how volatile it's been. The bottom line is, beyond of course just being careful who you follow online, in this social media age, that's always a good idea. But the bottom line is volatility products are risky. They've already seen massive price fluctuations in the past. And like I said, it would be wise to assume that anything that has already happened in the past could repeat itself in the future. And maybe you should leave a little bit of extra room in case it gets worse. Now, having said that, they do provide an excellent investing opportunity for those who understand and respect those risks. I definitely think investors could benefit from adding a conservative volatility strategy to their portfolio. You'll do your own due diligence, you'll find one that matches your long-term investing goals. But if they do prioritize risk management, then they can be a nice addition for a smaller allocation within a portfolio. But of course, no matter what, we can't allow a small allocation of anything to affect the entire portfolio. So of course, no matter what you're doing, make sure that the worst case scenario can't bleed over and infect the overall portfolio. That tweet, that strategy, if you can even call it that, was alarmingly irresponsible. And I just hope there's nobody out there who actually thought it was a good idea. I hope you, just like when I looked at it, said, wow, that is a blown up trading account waiting to happen. So if you want to learn more about these wild and crazy volatility markets, head on over to my website. There's plenty of articles and videos on there breaking down these important concepts. And of course, there is always a free trial there if you want to join the VTS community. See you next time. Thank you so much for watching the video. So don't forget to subscribe to the channel and go check out my website right here. There's tons of articles and videos on there, as well as a free trial to join the VTS investing community. What have you got to lose? Come see how I personally navigate these unruly markets. See you next time.